In this lesson, we're going to talk about lines um, and transversals and then angles that uh, are created by those two lines and a transversal. And then we'll also get into parallel lines again, uh, a little more of a review because we've already talked about parallel lines before. But the first thing is, is this purple line. This is referred to as a transversal because it's a line that intersects two lines in this case. It could intersect more than two lines at two different points, one point here, one point here. And like I said before, that transversal is going to create angles. So it creates, in this case, eight different angles. And we're going to look at uh, different angle pairs created by that transversal in those two lines. So if you draw this picture into your notes, uh, this is the only picture that you're going to need for the next four slides. So the first type of angles that we're going to refer to are called corresponding angles. And I like to think of corresponding angles as angles in the same place but different location, which I know doesn't make a whole lot of sense at the beginning, but here's how I'm going to look at it. Angles in the same place. So I'm going to look here. This line and the transversal create four angles up here and the transverse and the line create four angles down here. So I'm going to find an angle that's up here. I'm just going to go with angle one. Well, I look at this as it's above the line and it's to the left of my transversal. So I'm going to come down here and find an angle that's above the line and to the left of the transversal, which would be angle five. Therefore, angle one and angle five are corresponding angles. Then you go to angle two, above the line to the right of the transversal. Well, the one that's above the line and to the right of the transversal is angle 6. Therefore, angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding angles. And as you continue through here, you're going to find out that angle 3 and angle 7 are also corresponding angles, and angle 4 and angle 8 are corresponding angles. Next type of angle pairs are alternate interior angles. And I'm hoping interior angles gives part of it away. So we just have to go in here and we have to find angles that are on the inside. And I always look at them as the angles inside the two lines. Well, I have these four angles inside uh, the two lines. Now the alternate is going to tell you that we have to, I think of it as flip-flop from one side of the transversal to the other, and we also have to flip-flop from one line to the other. So I start here with angle three. Well, the other side of the transversal would be angle 4 and angle 6, but then I also have to flip-flop to the other line. That would give me angle 6. So angle 3 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles, and then when you go and look at angle 4, angle 5 matches up with the other alternate interior angles. So angle 4 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles, and angle 3 and angle 6. <laughs> alternate exterior angles, same concept as the alternate interiors, just now these are going to be on the outside of the two lines. So I'm going to look at angle 1 and angle 8, opposite sides of the transversal, and they're on the alternating lines. And then we also have angle 2 and angle 7. And the last one we're going to look at are consecutive interior angles. You may also want to write next to this same side interior angles. Because depending on what, uh, where you look, uh, I've seen it. some books will call them consecutive interior angles like you have here. I think accelerated math will refer to it as same side interior angles. Which again, I'm going to go to interior, same as the alternate interior angles. We're going to look at just the ones on the inside. And then the consecutive, meaning one right after the other. So if I pick angle 3, well, the next one down is going to be angle 5, following the transversal. Angle 3 and angle 5 are consecutive interior angles. And then when I go to the other side of the transversal, angle 4 and angle 6 are also consecutive interior angles. And I personally like the same side interior angles because then you can think same side of the transversal on the inside. Parallel lines, this is just a little, little review. We've talked about those before. Remember, coplanar is an important piece of this. And they're lines that never intersect. I've always in the past looked at uh, where are some parallel lines in the classroom. You can look at the, the lines on the floor. Many of those are parallel. Uh, you can look at lines in the ceiling. They're parallel as well. Skew lines, again, talked about those before. Those are the non-coplanar lines. And you may want to put on here that never intersect. And I always think of a, of a line from the ceiling that's running north and south, and then a line on the floor that's running east and west. There would be an example of uh, skew lines in my classroom. Parallel planes talked about those as well. Those are planes that never intersect. An example would be uh, the floor and the ceiling. 
you could use the front of the classroom wall and the back wall of the classroom. Those would be other examples in my classroom. And that's going to uh, be the end of the lesson dealing with transversals and the angles that the transversal creates along with things with parallel and skew.